Hey, it's Annette Reader here from the biblicalnutritionist.com and it is time for another grocery discovery. But yet, I have a surprise for you. It's not about the grocery store. In fact, I have one of my favorite foods that I'm going to share with you how to pick it off the tree, how to prepare it for dinner tonight, and how to have a delicious dessert tonight. I can't wait to share this with you. So instead of being at the grocery store, I'm actually in my backyard because I want to show you what's going on with my fig tree and I want to show you some really simple ways you can add figs to your dinner tonight. Now I get it, you may not have a fig tree in your backyard and if not, you need to plant one because this is an amazing tree, I'm very impressed. But second of all, you may be able to find some dried figs at the store. So I'm going to share with you both options, fresh and dried, so you can start enjoying this food tonight. So let's get started by picking figs from the tree. We've got one right there. We're just going to go ahead and add that to our basket. Actually, I've got several. I was holding off a couple days on picking my figs so that I would have lots to show you. But look at that one. I totally waited too long for picking that one. So we'll get some of our others instead. We've got quite a few that are ready to be picked. And if you can see it, you can tell it's just a true canopy. So when you read in scripture about how Deborah, she was a judge and she actually served under the fig tree because you could actually be 10 degrees less underneath this fig tree with these huge leaves and the protections. I've got two more up there to pick. I'm kind of stretching on my tiptoes there to get those. I'm gonna have to climb on my chair here to get some more up at the very top. You can just see we've got quite a few that are ripe, almost ripe, coming in quite heavily this year. This is the best year, best crop. I even pick them just a little bit underripe because they will ripen inside and then I don't have to worry about um, trying to beat the animals to my produce. So you can see I've got some more up there. I'm going to have to bring the limb down to me to pick those got quite a few in my basket here for today. I'm very excited. This is my best day yet. And we still have many on the tree. Some little ones that are still just starting to grow. We've got others that will be producing and ready to be picked probably in the next day or so. We've got one there that's going to be ready by tomorrow. And look at this. It's almost like a Brussels sprouts branch with all of the different figs on it. So this is just a great tree to plant very easy to grow. I have it planted on the south side of my house. My gardener landscaping friend suggested that because it likes protection from the wind so you can kind of see the kitchen window and everything there. Give you a little bit better view of what's going on in my yard. And now let's go to the kitchen and get started cooking. So here we have the figs that we picked today. I'm just going to pick my prettiest ones. I'm going to take off the top stem. I'm going to slice them in half. And then you get exposed to the beautiful flower on the inside. And I'm just gonna place them in the bowl here. I also have our dried figs. I took some out of the container and then added them to some hot water that I just heated up in my kettle. So we have those as well. And I'm just making a small dish here because it's just my husband and I. I can see that dried fig was dried with its stem on. So here we have the dried figs. You definitely tell a huge difference in dried and fresh. So we're gonna put those there. We'll go ahead and do one more. And slice this open. You can see the dried are not quite as pretty as the fresh, but you know what? What we're going to do with them, it's gonna taste delicious either way. And I just want you to realize what you can do yourself, whether you have fresh or dried. So the dessert we're making is cheese filled dates. I'm going to go ahead and use this scoop and just press that goat cheese right there on top. It doesn't really want to work for me very well. And any of your goat cheeses in the grocery store, they're so creamy that it <laughs> doesn't want to come out. We're just going to go ahead and just kind of just with a light spoon you can cream it very soft. 
to use for this recipe. That's a little bit more than what I want, so I'm just going to take half, press it there, and another half, and then we're going to cook this for four minutes at 500 degrees. Now, I made this just last week for a guest that came to town, and it was I always experiment on my guests. I was shocked at how delicious this was. We also made a goat feta cheese pizza. Was not expecting that to be a hit, and that was so good. I can't wait to make it again. This is a crock that works well in the oven, and so we're gonna bake this at 500 degrees for four minutes, and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, I just took them out of the oven. They smell slightly aromatic. I know the taste is gonna be good because I've already tried them with, as I said, when I served my guest. So now I'm just gonna put a pecan half on top. You could also use walnut halves as well. Press that in. And then, whoops, we had one. Lose its cheese. I don't know if I can touch that with it being hot. Let's see if I can get that back on there. There we go. Press that pecan on there. set up a little bit better and there we go then we're gonna drizzle it with just a little bit of honey and we have a delight to use to entertain our guests we're giving them such incredible nutrition in this dessert we're getting protein because of the cheese, we're getting fiber because of the fruit, we're getting protein because of the nuts, and we're getting flavor because of all four ingredients. This is just a Mediterranean delight. It's going to totally, your mouth is gonna say, why has it taken you so long to serve me this? Because I love it. I can't wait to read your comments down below what you thought about this quick dessert, and I have a feeling you're gonna like it as much as I did. And that's our grocery discovery today. Remember, not all treasures are in the grocery store. Some of them are in your backyard. And you know what? If you don't have treasures growing in your yard, then it's time to start planting. We are in the season of harvest. We are in the season of reaping. So we need to be sowing and reaping, sowing and reaping. We need to be sowing God's word we need to be reaping the joy from knowing him. We need to be letting other people know. The fig tree has so many biblical meanings. Go in and search it out for yourself. Check out our videos. But remember, just as we're physical, we're spiritual. And just as we're spiritual, we're physical. Hey, this is Annette Reader from the biblicalnutritionist.com, hoping you have a figtacious day today.